Hi. Uh, the title of this talk is Testing Distributions of Fused Objects. I'm Dan Aran, and this is joint work with Odette Goldreich. So in order to define the model that I will be uh, uh, talking about in this, uh, in this presentation, uh, I first want to go back to two standard models of testing properties. So the first model is testing properties of objects that can be represented as strings. So here, uh, pi uh, denotes a property of strings, that is a subset of strings. And the tested object is a string x of length n. The algorithm can query x at any location and get the value at that location. And is also given a distance parameter epsilon. What do we require of the algorithm? Uh, after asking a small number of queries, it should decide uh, whether x belongs to the property, has the, has the property, or is epsilon far? Where epsilon far is measured according to the normalized Hamming distance, uh, that is the fraction of indices on which the strings, uh, on which the strings uh, differ. The other um, model for uh, testing properties is testing properties of distributions. So here, P will denote the property of distributions. The tested object is a distribution D. The algorithm gets samples X distributed according to D. And also it is given a distance parameter epsilon. Here, after obtaining a small number of samples, the algorithm should decide if the distribution uh, belongs to the property or is epsilon far, where distance is the total variation distance. So an important thing to note here is that when talking about properties of strings, uh, the length n of strings is considered large, or else I could just read, uh, read all, all symbols in the string. And the case of distributions, uh, we think of the number of domain elements as, as being large, but each element is read at unit cost. And in both models, uh, the algorithms allowed a small constant failure probability. Okay, so now I'm ready to define the model that uh, we introduce and work with. And it is testing property of distributions over large strings. So here, P also denotes a property of distributions. Uh, the distributions we're interested in are over strings of length n. So it may be um, uh, the domain may be 0, 1 to the n or sigma to the n for some, uh, for some alphabet sigma. The algorithm has access to samples distributed according to D, and it is given the parameter epsilon, similarly to the standard model. But here, each element is a string of length n, and the access that the algorithm has to the string doesn't read the entire string, but it can query x in any location of its choice as in the string testing model. And what do we require of the algorithm after asking a, a small number of queries in total? So we measure the total number of queries that it performs. It should decide if the distribution has a property or is epsilon far, and as before, it is allowed a small constant failure probability. So uh, an important thing here is what is the notion of distance? Since we want to take into account uh, also distance between strings, between elements in the domain, and hence uh, the distance measure that, uh, that we work with between distributions is the earth mover's distance under the normalized Hamming. So let me see, say what this means. I'll give a definition, and then I'll also give an example, which I think will clarify this. So for two distributions, d1 and d2 over the same domain, again, that's 0, 1 to the n or sigma to the n, what we ask is what the, the, the measure of distance is how much does it cost us to transform one distribution to the other? Now, what do I mean by this? We, uh, we move weight from elements in one distribution to the other, and, the, and we pay when we move some weight, we pay the weight that we move times that normalized Hamming distance between, between the strings. So let's look at an example. Suppose that D1 is uniform over uh, strings that start with the first bit being zero. D2 is uniform over strings that the first bit is, is one. Uh, so I claim that the distance according to the, the earth movers under Hamming is just one over N. And why is that? So in order to transform D1 to D2, I can just match uh, uh, corresponding strings here. So what I mean a uh, zero uh, Z to one Z, the Hamming, the normalized Hamming distance between them is one over N. And I simply move all the weight. I move the weight of zero uh, Z to one Z. It is the same in D1 and D2. And hence the total 
uh, total cost that I pay here is just one over n. And note that, uh, that this uh, differs from the total variation distance where uh, the, the, the distance uh, is uh, one. It's just that they have disjoint, uh, disjoint support. So here the distance takes into account the distance in of the between distribution takes into account the distance between strings. And I'm going to refer to this model as distribution over huge object. So the acronym will be uh, DOHO. And since we take into account both the fact that we have the number of domain elements uh, that the, uh, over which the distribution is and the length of the size of the elements. Okay. Let me say, start by a few observations uh, to get kind of into things about the DOHO model. So the first one is that um, it's not hard to verify that testing properties of strings and just testing property distributions, just as I uh, defined in the first, uh, the first uh, slide, are special cases of DOHO. So that's one thing. It's not only that we have it's a hybrid of them, but it's also it generalizes both. Uh, the second observation is a simple one, but it's important to keep in mind that the sample complexity in this new model, the DOHO model, is upper bounded by the sample complexity of testing uh, the, same, the same property of distributions in the standard uh, testing model. Um, and this is simply because of the relation between the distance measures and the distance in the DOHO model is upper bound by the distance in the standard model. And this also means that the sample complexity may be smaller. So it's not only upper bounded, it may be strictly upper bounded. The next observation, again, also simple, is the query complexity of testing in the DOHO model is always upper bounded by the sample complexity times n. And we can always just query, uh, query x and all, uh, and all, uh, all its uh, symbols. And so we get, we get this bound. Now, if we combine observation two and three, what we get is that the query complexity in the DOHO model, which is what we're interested in, is always upper bounded by the sample complexity in the standard model times n. Point is, so this is kind of our basis, but we are focused on getting much lower query complexity. And the last observation I'd like to mention uh, relates between the query complexity of testing uh, the DOHO model, particular properties that are related to the string uh, testing model. So let me say what I mean here. So uh, suppose let pi be a property of strings of length n. So it's just some set of strings, right, among all strings of length n. And p sub pi will be the property of distributions consisting of all distributions whose support is a subset of pi. So for each subset here um, and any distribution over it, this I get a distribution that belongs to this, uh, this uh, class of distributions. And so if I denote by uh, the query complexity of testing in the standard string testing model by Q sub pi, then the observation which is a bit more of a claim since it requires uh, some, uh, a short proof, the query complexity of testing this property of distributions in the DOHO model is uh, roughly one over epsilon factor times larger than the query complexity of testing in the, the corresponding property of strings. Okay, so we have several uh, observations. Let's now go into uh, the, the results that we, we have in, uh, in the model on top of these observations. So let's remember um, by combining observation two and three, we have that the query complexity and the DOHO model, which I'll denote by uh, Q sub P and epsilon is upper bounded by N times the sample complexity in of the same uh, property in the standard. Uh, and what we ask, as we said before, are there conditions under which we can do much better? So indeed uh, there are. And uh, so let me define the, uh, the, the following notion uh, of uh, properties of distributions being closed under mapping. What does it mean? It means that for every uh, distribution in this uh, uh, class of distributions and for every mapping, every function f over the domain, uh, we have that if we apply this function to the distribution, then we also remain in the property. So what do I mean by applying the function to the distribution? And I mean that the resulting distribution is, is such that for every domain element uh, y, the, the, the weight of the distribution on y is the sum over the weights of the elements that are mapped to it. So once again, let's see an example that's always helpful. So here, uh, we have a distribution. These are, this is the histogram. Rather than writing strings, I just wrote uh, uh, um, 
has uh, alphabet symbols. I think that's uh, simpler. So this is the first distribution. And now suppose that I apply a function. What do I mean? I apply a map B to A. Then it means that the weight according to the resulting distribution of A is this a weight that we had to B. Now suppose that I map A, C, and F to D. Then I get the sum over A, C, and F, and uh, A, C, and F, and so, and so on. So this means uh, this is a distribution that we get, and we want to be closed under this uh, transformation. So what does our first theorem say? First theorem say that if P is closed under mapping, then the query complexity of, uh, of testing it is roughly the, the uh, sample complexity of testing in the standard model divided by one of epsilon up to poly log n factors. And here we take epsilon over two. So I'll talk more later about this theorem, also about its implications. Uh, but before doing so, um, let me kind of make, make a comment. You might ask, so here I talked about all mappings. Now, a natural question is to look only under mappings that are bijections, in which case I'll say that the property of distribution is label invariant. So it's the it's not the same uh, definition, except that we talk about bijections. So again, let's look at an example. So well, this is the same distribution I start from. So here I can only um, I can only apply some bijection, and this is the type of this is a, another distribution that I get. It should be um, inside uh, the property. So an interesting question is for which label invariant properties can we get results similar to theorem theorem one? So can we generalize something to what we have uh, for uh, uh, for properties that are closed under mapping. Um, and I'll just mention uh, that the, we have some result for a variant of label in, label invariant properties that is based on self-correction. I won't get into the details. You can see them in the, uh, in the paper in the paper itself. Okay. So we have this theorem, um, uh, uh, which, which is a general one. And now I want to go into uh, some other additional results that we have that are rela uh, relate between uh, that, that talk about properties of distributions that have been studied in the past in the standard testing uh, testing uh, model. As we'll see, theorem one will play a role. So uh, the next theorem uh, talks about distributions with support size at most m. I denote that as p sub. Uh, 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 less than or equal to M. And what we show is that the query complexity of testing this property is, um, is uh, roughly order M times poly one, uh, one over epsilon. Um, and we also show that this is fairly tight in terms of the de dependence, on, uh, dependence on M uh, since the sample complexity, the sample complexity, which is of course a lower bound on the, on the query complexity uh, is uh, omega, omega of M. And um, the, uh, the next property that we looked at, which also has been studied in the, form in the standard testing model, is um, distributions that are m-grained. What do I mean by m-grained? Not only is the support size bounded, but actually has it structured. So the, the weight for each x is some integer m sub x divided, uh, divided by m. Here we also get that the query complexity is the, the same, the same, of the same form. And we also have uh, not as tight a lower bound, but still lower bound close to, close to linear on the sample complexity. The third, uh, the theorem four, which is the, the third property that we looked at had been studied in the past is that distributions are uniform. So here it's even more restri restricted here, really M of X is just, is, is one. So it's uniform over some set of size M. And here we also get the, the same type of upper bound. And also we have a lower bound, uh, which is similar, but not precise to what we had, what we have here. Here it, uh, here it was on the sample complexity. Um, and here it is on the, on the query complexity. And, uh, and here, this is, this, is, this is important to note that while here we have, we, we have the lower bound is on the sample complexity in both of these, here, the lower bound is on the query complexity, so it's, it is fairly tight. But what we know is that the sample complexity of testing this property being uniform of a, of a, a set of size m, even in the standard model, grows like m to the two thirds. So we don't have this relation between the sample complexity and the, and the query complexity that is just a factor of poly one over epsilon. Here we do. Here uh, we don't we don't have we don't have uh, this relation, so it's interesting it's interesting um, uh, to note. 
So, uh, um, so in terms of how we prove these theorems, uh, all the upper bounds build on theorem one, uh, which I'll talk about uh, momentarily. So let's recall what was theorem one. We talked about it in the previous, uh, previous slide. It says that if P is closed under mapping, then we have the relation between the query complexity and the, the sample complexity. The standard model is roughly a factor of one over epsilon, uh, one over epsilon uh, larger. There should be a tilde, uh, tilde over here. So if we look at these results, then it is clear here that uh, the having support size at most M um, uh, clearly is uh, a property that is closed under mapping because we, by mapping, we can only decrease the support. Also being M-grained is also uh, clearly closed under mapping because when we apply any mapping, we still get an M-grain. But then you say, just a minute, but uh, uh, being uniform over a set is not closed under, under mapping. So, but this is proved actually by relating between uh, uniformity and being M-grained. So you can see this again in, in, the, in, the, paper, in the paper itself. Um, so I'll talk uh, about theorem one, uh, but let me also mention that the lower bounds here that we have here are kind of by transporting, transporting lower bounds from the standard model. And this is something that I won't talk about, um, won't talk about as much. So these, all of these results were for uh, testing properties of single distributions. And we have one more result here that also about previously studied properties of distribution, but pairs of distributions. So theorem uh, five talks about having a pair of distribution D1 and D2 over strings of length N. Uh, the algorithm gets samples from both, from both of them and it gets query access to these samples. And uh, what we show is that if we want to test whether they are identical or epsilon far according to the DOHO model, uh, then we can do it with poly one over epsilon times something like M to the two thirds where M is the support size um, of the, of the distributions. And we have a uh, fairly uh, matching lower bound in terms of uh, the dependence on and the dependence on M. Uh, the upper bound here is based on random uh, restrictions, which is also an idea that appears in the proof of theorem one. And the lower bound is an adaptation of work um, of, uh, of Valiant. Okay, so one more thing that before I talk a little bit about theorem one, um, let me just say that we also have a third type of uh, a third type of uh, uh, results, which are new properties that arise naturally in DOHO, and these new properties have they're kind of of the form that uh, the distributions are based on variance of an unknown ideal object. So what does this mean? So here I'll kind of uh, give uh, quickly kind of. Uh, uh, examples of what, what do I mean? So one result is distributions over noisy versions of an unknown strings. So here the ideal object is some fixed string that is unknown and the distribution that I uh, want to test is noisy versions of this string. And another result in which again, the ideal object is some string and the distributions are cyclic shifts of, of, this, uh, uh, of this string. So these are kind of new properties that are Kind of come up naturally in the DOHO model. Uh, so now what I want to, in the time that remains, I want to talk a little bit about the proof idea of theorem one. So let's recall what theorem one says. Uh, theorem one says, and here I remove the subscript P, uh, uh, P to make things a little easier to read. Uh, we said that if P is closed under mapping, then the query complexity is roughly the sample complexity in the standard model times one over epsilon. And again, what does it mean to be closed under mapping? So I wrote, I wrote, I wrote it here in case you, you forgot that by now. Okay, so let's, let's see what I can say about what is the proof idea. And I'll talk here about uh, the domain being zero, one to the N, it can apply to other, uh, other, other domains. So uh, if I have a distribution D over zero, one to the N, and a subset J, I will denote by uh, D sub J, the distribution that defined by restricting D to J and concatenating with zero to the N minus the, the size of J so that the distribution that I get is also over zero, one to the N. Once again, an example to make things clear. So suppose that this is my distribution. So um, the, uh, it's over strength length three. The, the, the weight of the distribution over all of each of the strings that starts with zero is one over 12. Over each of the strings that start with one is one over six. Okay, 
And say J is, uh, J is what I restrict the subset of indices I restrict to is just one. So it means that D, the, the, the resulting distribution, um, I sum over here, I have four times one over uh, 12. So uh, I get uh, one third here. I have four uh, times one over six, I get two thirds. So the distribution is over two strings, um, zero, 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 and one, zero, zero. And this is, this is the notion of uh, D sub J. Okay. Now, what is the first very simple observation? Since P is closed under mapping, and uh, uh, if the distribution belongs to P, then when I do this restriction, no matter to any subset that I, that I restrict to, I also get a distribution that belongs to the property. Simply the mapping is the one that you may, that you may, uh, that you, you may expect. Okay, so now we have this. Um, and remember, we want to relate the query complexity to the sample complexity in the standard distribution testing model. So uh, uh, let T be a standard testing and its sample complexity is S substandard. And I want to use it to get a DOHO tester, which I'll denote by T prime. What will I do? So um, I'll take the T prime. What it will do is it will take a sample of size and the standard, roughly a constant, oops, a constant. Sorry, that's the problem with, um, with a mouse that jumps. So um, I take a sample of, uh, of a constant times uh, sample complexity in the standard with, with a, a distance parameter here, epsilon over two. I select I or T prime, selects a random subset of indices uh, of size that is one over epsilon times logarithmic of the sample uh, complexity divided by epsilon. And now what it does, it runs the standard testing model on the distribution D sub J. So what does it mean? I use the selected sample from step one. And when the standard tester asks, asks me uh, uh, queries on indices that belong to J uh, that I selected here, uh, then uh, they are answered by querying the sample. So I paid for that. And any index outside of J is answered by zero because right, that is the definition that we have here of the, uh, for the distribution V sub J. Okay. Uh, so first thing, simple thing, the query complexity indeed is right, the sample complexity here. This is this times T. T, right, is the size of the, of the, uh, uh, of the subset J. So again, then we get really, remember this, we get what we want uh, in terms of the query complexity. So let's turn to talk a little bit about the correctness. Okay, so here what I did, I just wrote, this is the, the theorem. Uh, this is the algorithm that we just talked about, uh, what just talked about before. So as we said before, the easy thing is that if D belongs to P, right, then that we want T prime to accept it uh, with high probability um, or with probability one, if we, if we have, if T is, uh, if the original uh, tester is, uh, has one-sided error, then because D sub J belongs to P, correctness follows from that of T, right? So this is, this is the easy part. Now let's go to the, uh, to the other, the other uh, direction. So let's consider a distribution D that is epsilon far from P. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that if we could run T, right, the standard testing on the sample, no, no projection uh, to J, it should reject with high probability. Now, since P is closed under mappings, and so this means it's label invariant, right? We, we, we defined this notion of label invariant uh, before. We can actually assume without loss of generality that the decision of the tester, the standard tester, is based only on collision numbers. So once again, an example of what I mean by collisions. Suppose this is my sample here. Then we have these three uh, samples uh, collide, they're the, the same, these three collide. So the collision numbers, I have uh, one two-way collision, one three-way collision, and one uh, singleton. So this is the notion of collision, uh, collision numbers. Okay. What would we have liked to prove? Uh, so uh, we know that the, the decision of T, if it, it ran on the entire sample, uh, then it would make decision according to collisions. So we would have liked to prove that with high probability over a choice of a subset J, the collisions of D sub J um, on S prime, S prime is the number of samples we take are similar to those of, um, 
or those of uh, B. This is unfortunately not, not quite right. Uh, uh, when we perform, when we take a subset J, then actually create these uh, new collisions. Rather, what we do, we do the following for each subset J, we define in our analysis, we define some D prime. It is kind of variant of D that depends on J. And what are, uh, what are the properties? We prove that with um, high probability over, over the choice of J, what we have is that this special D prime is epsilon two close to D, which means that it is epsilon two far from, from P, right? Because D, we're assuming P, uh, uh, D is epsilon far from P. So T would have to reject D prime if it were given as prime samples. That's the first thing. Second thing that, that we prove uh, is that when we take D prime sub J on S prime samples, then indeed we get collisions that are similar to those of D prime which would mean that he would reject uh, this distribution if it were given as prime uh, samples. And the third thing is that there is a relation between, so when I said it's a variant, that actually when we do the restriction on, on, on J, we get the same distribution, which means that, so T would reject the DJ with high probability on S prime samples. So this, uh, this, uh, this uh, gives us that the, uh, that we, uh, the algorithm T prime will indeed reject based with high probability based on the correctness of T. So the main thing here, of course, is in defining uh, D prime. And again, this uh, um, uh, you, you may see and uh, read this in the paper um, itself. Okay, so let me just do a recap before I, I finish. Uh, what uh, did we see here? We defined a new model, which we call DOHO, for property testing of distributions over long, large strings. Uh, the algorithm gets query access to sampled strings. Um, we present some general results. I talked about one, but we have uh, some more. Abounding the query complexity, the total number of queries uh, performed under certain conditions. And we give uh, some almost type results for specific properties of interest that were previously studied in uh, distribution testing uh, uh, model, both for single distributions and for pairs. And we introduce new properties that arise naturally in this model and study them. This I didn't talk about much, but you can, you can read in the paper. Okay, so, so thank you.